Hello, everybody. Welcome back. Welcome back from lunch. Uh, my name is Luca Benini, as you can see there, and I'm the VP Sales MIA for Social Bakers. Uh, if you're actually using your tweeting machines, you can tweet me at Luca Benini with the, you know, the ones, Social Bakers, at Social Bakers. Of course, it's my company, and use the hashtag ArabNetME. Uh, who is Social Bakers? What do we do? Well, we're the global standard for how uh, social media marketing is measured and optimized. What does that mean? Uh, this is the best way that I have probably to represent what we do and have you understand why we are relevant uh, to the companies that we, um, uh, that we sell to and why I think you know, we have the credibility to, to be on stage. We, we have created a very solid foundation to everything that we do, uh, which anchors in data. So we have at the foundation, as at, you know, the basic level of what we do is analytics. It's, it's our strong product, it's also a name for our product, but it's, it's really you know, our belief that everything that we do anchors and um, has its uh, root in uh, data analytics. And then around it, we've created additional software. Um, as you can imagine, you know, talking about social media, um, the software allows our clients and companies to publish their content, so manage their presence on the social media networks, um, manage their conversations and the engagement um, that they want to generate in the social media networks, and obviously also take that um, beyond the boundaries of the community, beyond the boundaries of whatever restriction is out there, uh, using social media advertising to amplify their messages. Another way to um, understand who we are as a company is to take a look at um, the, uh, the, the logos, the, the companies that our, our clients that trust our data uh, to make their decision and to drive and design their social media um, strategies. Uh, it's a bit of an eye test, actually. If, uh, the, the, someone sitting at the back can spot um, the FMCG brands. We work with Unilever, P&G, some automotive brands, telco brands um, out there. Um, you can also see some, uh, quite a few actually local companies here. We have a, a thriving business in, uh, in the Middle East. Uh, we enjoy um, you know, working with a lot of massive companies and some of them are really and truly um, excellent in their execution of social media. I'm referring to uh, our, our host actually, Atlantis, you see that right there. Um, some other in the accommodation industry, um, Emirates among the airlines that we work with, um, and few other uh, names in the telco space, for instance, that you recognize there. Um, I want to do a bit of an exercise with you as we come back uh, from, uh, uh, from, from lunch. Uh, I think it, it will be useful to, to introduce the, the other part of my presentation today. So let's do an exercise. Please raise your hand if you came to the conference in general or to this session in particular uh, to understand more about social. How many people? If you're not raising your hand, you're probably in the wrong room because this is about social, right? So keep it up if you think that social is crucial to the success of brands today and in the next five years. A lot of hands still up. And then keep it up if you think that we are tapping today as an industry into the full opportunity that social represents for the brands. So a lot of hands going down at the last part. So we all, I think, uh, are interested in social. We all think that social is crucial and relevant uh, for brands and marketers and companies today and definitely uh, for their survival in the next five years. Uh, but not all, all of us are convinced that we're tapping into the opportunity right now. I think that's exactly maybe why I'm on stage and that's exactly um, the size of the challenge and the size of the opportunity that we face right now. Um, companies are approaching social. Companies, we know that social is crucial, is vital for them, and yet companies are struggling to be excellent at it. Uh, we help a lot of those companies to get there or to start to lay their foundation, maybe through our data, which is um, you know, one of the ways in which we, we, we help them. So for the rest of the the presentation, we, we're going to probably refer to this as an agenda. So we're going to take a look at you know, what social means and why it's relevant and why it's vital for, for companies to take social seriously. And then we're going to look at some excellence, some numbers. Uh, that's actually originally uh, why I was called on stage, to look at some numbers uh, of what is social media excellence today and what's happening in the Middle East um, around social. Um, 
The first point is about how relevant is social. So I, I probably like uh, eye tests today. Um, so uh, maybe once again, can you spot social bakers in there? Um, it's, oh, I have a laser. You can't see the laser. It's somewhere here in this box. So the reason why I put this up is because I'm trying to make the point that social is relevant and um, it's a driving force for marketing today. Um, this is the latest uh, marketing technology landscape. If you can read, you can actually read it right there. It was published in January 2014. And there are two things that immediately jump out of this, in my opinion. One is complexity and crowded space in general and uh, a professional approach needed, which we all know about, and that's why we're here to understand more about it. Uh, there are multiple dimensions to marketing today. And you know, this is a, a very good uh, visualization of the complexity that comes with it. The second thing that jumps out of this, I believe, is look at the size of the boxes. And this is the whole marketing landscape, technology in marketing, the whole landscape. The biggest box, I don't know if you can actually read it, is social media marketing, is this one here. So that, you know, if you think about the, the point that I was trying to make is that how is social relevant to brands today? Well, this is one way which I think is, is very you know, in tune with, uh, with Arabnet and the, the theme and the startups and the technology focus in the Middle East. Well, this is how relevant they are. I argue with you that the reason why that box is the biggest one is because that's where the need, the biggest need is right now for marketers. It's also because that's where we see um, the best and the largest innovation coming. So we, we're proud to be part of that box and we're, part of the, uh, you know, to, we're proud to be part of that growth uh, that is in social right now. So the first point that I'm making here is it's relevant. And this is just one way of you know, making that point, but I like it. Uh, the other point is why is it relevant? Actually, how does it become crucial for companies? And I'm going to try to you know, uh, kind of take a long, um, a long story here, a long, uh, not, not a shortcut to go to the point. But I think you'll, if you follow, you, you'll see the point that I'm trying to make. Um, a recent, um, it was out like five days ago, um, ITU latest um, report on telecommunications and access to the internet. It actually says that by the end of this year, 2014, three billion people will be connected to the internet. And that's adding 400 million between now and the end of the year. This is a, a global number, but it's a massive number. So there's 400 million people that will come online in the next six months and they will be five billion in the next five years. So give it another five years, fast forward to the expo year, and there will be virtually the whole world will be online. What we heard today and what we know and what we experience and what the statistics are telling us is that the way that, uh, or the platform through which these people that come online, they're online virgins, and they, for the first time they have access to the internet, the platform that they will use to connect will be mobile. We've heard it today, you know, there's a, a number of statistics out there. I don't think anybody has any doubt that that's the future of where, um, you know, the platform uh, through which uh, internet will be enjoyed. What I'm also looking at is a statistic that says that what then happens, if we look at what happens right now on mobile, and we look at time spent, and we look at what people do, uh, on their mobile phone, well, 80% of their time spent is in a social context. So they access, through a mobile platform, their entertainment, their information, they connect, obviously, with their friends, their family, uh, other people, but also they connect and they discover brands in a social context. So what I'm arguing with you is that how crucial will be, is today, and will be in the next five years, being able to master that social context, to be there, to prepare your company today to welcome your customers tomorrow. Because they will come and they will discover you in a social context. We can spend hours talking about what social context means in, in the practicality of every day, in, in what you're doing right now, tweeting is about being 
on a social network connected to people and connecting through people to information, to entertainment, to brands and products. And, this, and that discovery element, that awareness, and all the other elements of you know, what a, a marketing, um, a good marketing strategy is aspiring to achieve is right there within the social context. So with this you know, past two slides, I, I believe that I, I, I argued with you, at least I, maybe the, the points came across, that it's not only um, relevant social today, but it's also vital for the survival of brands within, you know, in the immediate future uh, that is ahead of us. Um, the third point that was on my agenda was about social media excellence. And you know, we, we did the exercise of raising our hands and trying to understand if we are actually tapping, if we think that we're tapping into that opportunity right now and we're doing it with excellence. So I'm gonna take you quickly through um, uh, you know, three example markets. We're gonna uh, take a look at a few, very few statistics. You know, we, we have a, a number of statistics. If you, if you know uh, even very little about social bakers, you know that we go in depth and in breadth. Yeah. And, uh, we are you know, gonna look, take a look at you know, three markets very briefly um, and try to, again, through the numbers, understand what is social excellence and understand how do you achieve that and if there, is, uh, if there are examples that we can, uh, that we can uh, benchmark ourselves against. Okay, start with Egypt first. Um, Egypt, massive Facebook market. Uh, the first stats that I want to uh, pull up here are about uh, two, two main areas, right? So one is engagement. And the other one is what we call socially devoted, uh, which is social customer care. So the first stop up, uh, start up there uh, focuses on um, an interesting view that moves away from size, number of likes, and looks into how is that community engaging with the brand. We'll come back to this concept of engagement, but you know, to, to simplify it, we, we can actually look at this, and you can see that there are some big companies in there and some small companies. So that probably behind them, they have big communities and small communities. So there's a different ability that companies are showing to leverage their community, to leverage social media connections and that social media context that we were talking about earlier to create engagement. You can see the average post engagement rate is 0.12% the overall Egyptian market and these guys are really you know proving to be excellent at what they do 3.64 is the first number up there if you can't see it um, and it goes you know all the way to you know around 1% uh, which is a, a, an absolute astronomical number it's 10 times the average of the market. Um, we're going to come back to to engagement uh, with with a few anecdotes that will help me make my point. The other one is um, uh, socially devoted. We, we invented this measure to, again, add another layer which is very relevant for us as users of you know, social networks and how we connect to brands, which is we expect a level of um, conversation uh, with, with the brands, and that conversation sometimes starts with a question. So when we pose questions to brands, how well do they reply? And that response rate, and, and then the response time, together they form, and in our, in our studies, they uh, provide um, a visibility into the ability of these companies to be socially devoted, to dedicate themselves to uh, their customers that connect with them uh, through social networks. And again, not a surprise to look at the, uh, the ones that are topping our list there being companies that understand very well customer care in general, and they're applying the same rigor, the same scientific approach, and probably the same effort in terms of resources into bringing that experience, that execution to social media and executing on social customer care very, very well. Um, I want to take you through you know, three, uh, three uh, Facebook posts. They are uh, the ones that proved to be uh, most popular, and we're actually looking, by the way, at April statistics. I, I think it was actually on the on the first May statistics are, are not ready yet, so I, I chose April. But I think it's uh, it, it's good enough to make um, our point. Um, most popular Facebook posts in uh, in Egypt by engagement, defined by number of interactions and engagement generated. Um, one from Nokia, Egypt. The other one from uh, I think it's Chipsy. 
um, Chipsy, and uh, obviously the other one from, uh, from Vodafone. Uh, interestingly, um, two of those companies, um, being our, our clients globally, um, these numbers are incredible. The total interactions, it's 117,000 total interactions for the Nokia Post. It's uh, 79,000 for, uh, for Chipsy and 32,000 uh, for Vodafone. They're incredible numbers. They're, they, they talk about the size of the ability, maybe not, not the size, but the ability for these companies to engage with their message, with their community and beyond their community. Um, they have, and we are, we're going to look at you know, a few more uh, in, in the next uh, couple of minutes. And they all have something in common. They have three uh, main elements in common. One is a great marketing execution, be that a copy, be that a visual, be that colors, be that the emotions and the storytelling that they, um, that they provide. The second thing that they have in common is that typically they have a call to action. Uh, we can actually find it here, you know, the, the voting, um, please vote, and you know, kind of a call to action, so do something um, to engage with me. It's not just broadcasting a message, it's requiring some, some, some sort of feedback. Um, the other thing that they have in common is, that, is the thing that you don't see there. And, and it's the main point that I probably would like you to take away from today, is that um, being excellent at uh, marketing, uh, visual copy execution, and telling a great story and calling to action is no longer enough. What these uh, um, uh, posts have in common, and in general what we will see, the companies that are topping our charts have in common, is that they take, um, they take social so seriously that they're investing their money. And what they're doing is that they're approaching it very seriously and with the rigor that you would expect from any other marketing execution. Tapping into the data, having a deep understanding of what are delivered that actually make something successful understanding through their community what works, and then using the deep data. We, we actually heard this morning talking about you know, leveraging real-time data to make decisions to drive investment, social media investment, to amplify beyond the boundaries of the community. And this is exactly what these companies are doing. So what you don't see here is the rigor that is behind it to boost the message, to amplify it through social media channels with a very solid data-driven strategy um, that really um, enables them to achieve these incredible numbers. Let's actually take a look at Saudi Arabia very quickly. Um, Again, engagement rate, uh, we see some interesting you know, large brands, you know, there's even a bank you know, topping the engagement. Again, if you think about what I just said, would you actually expect a bank to top a chart for engagement on Facebook organically with a great story and with a, with a beautiful picture? You know, that's not possible anymore. These guys, they know what they're doing. They're investing their money. They're getting the best talent dedicated to deep, deeping, uh, deeping, uh, digging deep into the data and using that knowledge to boost and, and amplify their messages and topping the chart for engagement. Um, we can look at you know, brands uh, interaction, or Twitter brands by interaction in the, um, in the region. And, uh, YouTube, which is actually telling a great story, we heard it before as well on, on this stage earlier, uh, about YouTube and uh, that experience in, in, uh, in, in Saudi specifically. Um, and then again, if we look at the, the posts, we can see that the traits that I was talking about here, uh, earlier. Great marketing execution, great storytelling, understanding of the market and you know, what, what works. Um, you know, specifically, you know, two you know, Toyotas and you know, a call to action um, in there from this uh, uh, leasing company in, uh, in Saudi. And then, again, another, another bank post that just, you know, it's a, it's a great campaign, and I think we're all familiar with the, the campaign that looks at the future uh, from, from Saab, uh, but no way on earth that, you know, 27,000 likes can come organically just because 27,000 people find this beautiful image and they want to share it with everybody is because it's targeted so well and it's studied so well to tap into the right time of the day, the right day of the week, the right uh, moment and the right people uh, with the right media investment. Um, and that's how you drive these numbers. And that's how you create success story today um, 
on, on social. And ultimately, uh, let's you know, get closer to home and let's look at some uh, UAE numbers. Uh, <laughs> very interesting, uh, Jackie's Electronics. Uh, if you're familiar with the, with the company, uh, you probably know why they're there. Um, uh, they're, they're very, very socially devoted. Um, beautiful uh, examples here of how you run uh, social customer care with uh, airlines stopping uh, socially devoted. Um, some, you know, Twitter and, and YouTube uh, stats. Uh, I just want to, you know, give a, a point out that Atlantis is actually topping the video, uh, the video YouTube charts um, right there. And they're, you know, we're, we're right here. Um, most popular Facebook post, again, great execution. Uh, this is a, a beautiful story, probably a social first story when it came in, in the mind of, you know, whoever, you know, created it. But then, um, un impossible to reach and achieve those results without the rigor that comes with understanding the data and putting the right effort um, and taking it seriously. So I'm rushing because you know, my time is over and I'm at the key takeaways. So what are the points that we make during this presentation? What I want you to take away uh, today with you and maybe come you know, to talk to me about uh, later. Um, well, first, is that companies that don't take social seriously today will be out of, of business in the next five years. That's a given. Uh, it, I think we all agree. I, I'm certainly convinced about it. And it's time that we take it seriously. And taking it seriously means uh, the right mix of art and science yet, but yes, uh, but it's all about the data. And then ultimately, uh, we've seen it actually, there is social media excellence in the Middle East. So we don't need to, to go too far to find that excellence that we are striving for and to find great examples of how you execute um, a social media strategy very successfully. And with that, I thank you and I invite you to connect with me or the rest of the team, if you like them. <laughs> um, a couple of colleagues are right there and I'll be, I'll be around. Uh, please contact me. Thank you very much.